The roller coaster manufacturer, Aerodynamics, has had many names throughout its long history, such as AeroHus and AeroDevelopment. However, for the purposes of this video, they will just be referred to as Aero. Aero's track design varied from coaster to coaster. Aero's suspended coasters, such as Iron Dragon at Cedar Point or the Bat at Kings Island, use this track design and have cars that swing side to side during tight maneuvers. Arrow also made hybrid coasters, which are coasters with steel track and wood supports, or vice versa, such as Gemini at Cedar Point, or any of their mine train roller coasters, such as Cedar Creek Mine Ride at Cedar Point, or Carolina Gold Rusher at Carowinds, and many more. The track design of these coasters is very similar to Arrow's other coasters, except the track on these hybrids do not feature a cylindrical spine seen on other Arrow coasters. Arrow's standard sit-down inverting coaster track consisted of a cylindrical steel spine with large spines supporting two tubular steel rails on the inside of the track. This design is fairly easy to recognize, however not every coaster that uses this track is an Arrow. Long story short, Vacoma stole Arrow's track design in the early 80s. This led to Arrow and Vacoma Track looking identical. For more information, check out my video on Vacoma Track in the link in the video description. Although Arrow's sit down coasters utilize the same track design as many of Vacoma's coasters, it's not impossible to distinguish the two. The first thing you can check when you see this track is where are the riders seated? Are they above or below the track? Arrow never used this track design on their suspended coasters, so if the riders are underneath the track, then it's a Vacoma. Now just because the riders sit above the track, it does not automatically mean that it's an arrow. So your next test should be to look at the layout of the track. Does it look like this Vacoma boomerang? If so, then it's definitely not an arrow. You can also look more closely at the track. If the track has two support spines, it's a Vacoma. The one exception to this is Tennessee Tornado, which has two support spines on the lift hill. This coaster is also an exception to the rules as it has rounded spines connected to the rails not Arrow's typical squared off spines. An example of some coasters using Arrow's standard track are Corkscrew at Cedar Point and Vortex at Kings Island. Also, many Arrows can be recognized by their distinct lift hill sound. However, this takes a trained ear to recognize. If the coaster you're looking at passes all of these tests, then search the roller coaster's name on the roller coaster database, or RCDB for short. This site will give you all the information you could ever need on nearly every roller coaster in the world. I will always recommend using RCDB if you're confused, as there are some very confusing roller coasters out there, like Ninja at Six Flags St. Louis. It passes all of the tests, meaning it should be an arrow, but it's actually made by Vacoma. And if you weren't confused enough, another manufacturer also uses a similar track design to Arrow, Chance Rides. Their track can be seen on coasters like Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood, however their track is slightly different to Arrow's as the spines connecting the rail to the support spine are rounded off, rather than being at a sharp angle like on an Arrow or a Vacoma. Unfortunately, Arrow went bankrupt in 2002, and as such, they've not produced any roller coasters since. So if a coaster is newer than 2002, it's not an Arrow. Arrow also made some other coasters with a different track, such as Three Wild Mice and the 4D Roller Coaster X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. So to conclude, if the track looks like this and the cars swing freely from it, it's an arrow. If the track looks like this and has wooden supports, it's an arrow. If the track looks like this and the coaster's not suspended from the tracks and it's not a boomerang layout, look it up on RCDB.